Okay. Uh, and which was actually fueled by uh, concoctions that Robin would make up. Yes. And she would ask us, what would right. you like in your drink? Now, here's... We here's t- we're talking about a big drink. No, I know. You know. It, I just... I, I, I want to say this because I think it's kind of important for your, for your uh, audience to understand this. All of this stuff that went on happened when I was completely sober. Yes. I've never been drunk in my entire life. I know. I never drank. I never got high. Yeah. So this is the, the kind of, you know, this walk of disclaimer. shame. This, this is, is the walk of shame because <laughs> all of that stuff that we did, uh, I did completely sober. Like the underwear set. Yeah. I was completely sober. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's like, but still, but, you hey, jump right in. I saw underwear. There's nothing yeah, wrong with yeah. that. You know. I, you know, but I, I you know, which, which this is important, though, because I think. But then this, underwear in the 70s, it was actually G string bikinis. Yeah. yeah. It was they were a, banana hammocks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. They're not <laughs> so, what, right. what, what people yeah. were to They're not like, you know, brief, uh, what are the, what, the boxer briefs. Boxer they weren't briefs, things, yeah, yeah, they weren't things like that. They yeah. were like, Jeez, you know. I think they're illegal now because I can't get those anymore. <laughs> I swear, I'm, you jockey, tried? jockey bikinis. <laughs> like, I, I collect them. <laughs> oh, you collect and and I okay. I Fabrice them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't watch them anymore because I I want them to last for a, for at least twenty more years that I'm on tour, and I will retire them when I'm at eighty five. Yes, right. And so actually, <laughs> uh, the uh, the um, uh, the House of Blues. Yeah. The, you know when they put the things. Up like that. <laughs> Yours is just going to be like big, 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 big. Yeah. Of the, of I still the, have them. Of the breeze. I still have them. Yeah, yeah. Oh and as a matter of fact, later on, I, I met my, my, my wife, and she says, what are you wearing? Oh, nothing. Because by then, it, was, it wasn't even an underwear anymore. Right. It was yeah. like this rubber band around right. my waist with like pieces missing from it. You know, it's like, what is that you got on? Oh, my God. Well, you can't get these yeah. anymore anywhere, you know. Yeah. It's you know I, I there's multiple times you know I, I think this though is a lot of people feel this that they're they're incredibly lucky to survive their their youth you know and we were yeah. you know we we had but the beauty now is that we're able to look back on yes. it with this sense of humor you know but, it's like which, which actually it's the sense you sense of humor that yeah. kept us oh you know most because, definitely because when you have to yeah. bu- uh, the band has to sleep in one hotel right. room right you gotta oh, have yeah. a great sense of humor absolutely and and but the the best part and uh, you know I don't want to you know be too you know tackier but but the best was always you know <laughs> you tell me if you <laughs> if I shouldn't go here but it when when we would all be in one room and one of us would um, invite a lady back, yes. if you will, to the. Yes. And then it was like dibs on the bathroom. Dibs on the bathroom. Yeah. I mean, the shower. Like, yeah, the shower. <laughs> it was always about the shower. And it's like, yeah. And the, and the, yes. the conversations that had to take place, you yes. know, and the, uh, the negotiations. And be as quiet as possible. Oh, yeah. It's like, shh, 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 shh. You know? <laughs> Yeah, it's but me. somehow they kept coming back, I, which was always like amazing to me. It's like it was, you know, that shows you how wonderful guys we were. Yeah, but well, <laughs> thank you. That's the until that's the, the spin that will put until us. for me personally until the inflatable banana incident. Oh, yeah, and uh, but but I t- you know I actually tell this story to to other people that you know when they. You know, grill me about the old days and stuff, and I and I always say that that's kind of where some of the you know the more infamous you know Rudy Sarzo moves on stage <laughs> actually come from a very specific you know yes. uh, event you know yeah. event that uh, that was uh, wasn't that Rush West Rush right? West yeah Rush West that was the hotel that we we had a residency yes. there a lot of a lot of yeah. stuff happened there oh yeah. Yeah, Most of, well, because we, we 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 will share rooms now. By this time, we had gone up. Yeah, because we were two people to a room. Two people for a room. Yeah, yeah. which and, is like man. And for some reason, we we were the only <laughs> residents of that hotel. Yeah. Did you ever? No, no. I I figured that out sort of years later. It's like, <laughs> wait a second. You know how come? <laughs> but. When you hear stories yeah. about the place, about, you realize why. And the guy yeah. who ran yeah. 
Dominic. Yeah, Dominic. Dominic. That's Dominic. it. That's Dominic. it. I couldn't remember Dominic. his name. Dominic. Little, little oh. Italian old oh guy God, yeah. that... Oh. <laughs> that I I don't want to be rude, so I'm gonna like just bleep yeah. myself a lot yeah. of words. Yeah. Listen, you know, bleep. Listen, bleep after bleep. we were staying there for for a few weeks, we realized that every key, every key yes. worked with every, every room, every door. Every One door. key would work with every door <laughs> so, in the place. So Dominic, let's say you had a visitor, yes, in your room, yes, and he would like in the middle of of the uh, event of, of the event, he would <laughs> walk in and stand in front of the bed, yes, until you realize there is this guy in front of the bed because it'd be Dude, like really what are quiet. You doing in a room? And then he would says, uh, <laughs> "I don't want her to blink, blink, blink yeah. with my towel." Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> and then he would just turn around and leave. <laughs> it's so amazing because if you know if we hadn't lived through it, you know, and actually been there and done that, you just would. And if you remember the the motto that we used to always say toward this was more towards the end, is that. You know, people would always say, well, it can't get any worse than this. And we used to always say, well, we know it can get worse. <laughs> and then it would. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> like, yeah. It would always get, yeah. yeah. But, it would always get just one going, little degree worse. I mean, there's, I mean, I, I, we can talk about so many clubs that we played in the Chicago area, especially in the middle of winter. Oh, yeah. New Year's Eve. Ooh. There's oh, this. Remember that? The, the, that gig. That gig. Right. Yeah. I have never been so cold in my entire <laughs> life on stage wearing layers Layered. of I coats know. and stuff. Was, New Year's Eve, yeah. I don't even know the name of the club. All I know is down yeah. the street, uh, Cheap Trick was playing. Yeah. So there was no nobody. One. Yeah. Not even the waitresses yeah. that worked there wanted right. to be there. They yeah. wanted to go and see yeah. Cheap Trick. Yeah. And we were like all by ourselves playing. And there was a leak in the roof right over yes. over the stage. Yes. So they have buckets. Yes. So the the snow somehow the snow and the ice was melting. I don't know how it could have melted because it was so cold. It I, was like I don't know well, five it was ten degrees we below had, zero. Yeah, we had those little heaters. Yes. I mean this is oh, seventies. Right. Yeah. And they, they weren't like the the safety heaters we no. have today. No, no, no. no, no. They were those big lamps yeah. where where there's like metal, metal, like, yeah. bright orange yeah. from the. You know, and you could have gotten electrocuted because we were oh, yeah. wireless. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. We yeah. <laughs> had this puddle on stage from the melting ice. Yeah. You're standing in a, puddle, in a puddle, going up to touch your microphone, going. <laughs> With a space I hope heater, I don't die. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's rock and roll in the name totally. of rock. But but here's here's actually kind of a, a, a you know a, a thought process about this. Even at like because I remember that night so specifically how just brutally cold and just it was the worst. You know, just I hate this. This sucks. But I kept thinking to myself. There's a really cute girl out there <laughs> that kind of likes me. I think I'm in, right? <laughs> and I'm, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, no matter how bad this is, I'm, I'm probably going to hang out with that chick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, so it sort of was the, because that was the thing yeah. that, you know, he, through all of the stuff that happened, we had to be really good at sort of cherry picking moments that would get us through some of that stuff and because we all did that you know i mean because you know we you know the thing you have to remember in hearing all these stories is the commonality of all this was we loved music yes. so much yes we loved what we did yes. so much that we were willing to do any of this yes. to get on stage you know it's like I don't care what I have to get through just to get to that, you know, six or eight hours on stage. <laughs> but, Remember, you know, it's, it's, a it's, it's a commonality that yeah. it's never ending. Yeah. You know, I, I really, I, I can't see you or me yeah. one day say, you know what? Yeah. I really hate music. No, no, no. This that, is, the, yeah. I'm, I'm done. We're, we're lifers, you know, and, then, and when people, you know, talk about music and, and, you know, like I'm, you know, I'm 62 years old now. Okay. And it's like people are like, why are you not in Italy right now? 
And I'm like, because I still love what I do. Well, you'd be doing I it in Italy. I mean, <laughs> smoking cigars, <laughs> hanging <get> out, <laughs> and you know, watching, sitting in the piazza, you'd smoking a cigar, hanging out. <laughs> but I, yeah, but see, that's the thing. In the dream, that's yeah. the only scene I yeah. see. Yeah, you know, it's me sitting in there with my cigar, hanging out. You know, watching life go. But you're right, because after you know, after a few days, I'd be like. Now I got to go make another record, you know. It's yeah. just we are lifers, and that's the yeah. That's why I'm still here doing what I do after all these years. You, you know? know, I I uh, I first experienced uh, anxiety attack when I was touring with Ozzy, and I used to during the breaks when we would come to Los Angeles. Uh, Rebecca, who's now my wife, she was my girlfriend then. She used to pick me up, and she. <laughs> She would have these big 80s rollers. There was like this little foamy, big, round <laughs> yes, rollers. Yeah, right. And I would sit. Uh, she would drive and I would be in the passenger seat. And, and when 8 o'clock arrived, mm-hmm. I would start like squeezing them. Sure. Both hands. Right. I didn't even realize what it was. It was my anxiety. I'm supposed to be on stage. Was, yes. yes. It's yes. like, why? What? Where's everybody at? Yeah. Why, why am I not getting the call to go to stage? Exactly. Like, yeah. That's exactly. No, I, I know what you're saying. I mean, because for me, though, I, I transitioned out. Um, I mean, I toured, I think my last sort of, you know, mega tour was in 85 with uh, The Fix and uh, mm. I forget who. It, but that was my last big tour because I knew... Even when I was, you know, back in the day, pro- probably not at the time we were together, because mm-hmm. I still saw myself, mm-hmm. you know, as being on stage all the time, make you know, being actually playing the music, and yeah. then, and and what it ha- for me, what had happened was um, after we moved to L.A., which I'm sure we'll get to in yeah. a minute. Yeah. My father is Plymouth Station Wagon. That's right. And the U-Haul. We're, we're going to get there very quickly. <laughs> right. So, but I, I remember at, at that, you know, there was, after being in L.A. for a while, I got uh, a call to audition for Al Stewart because he needed a piano player. And before we went on tour, they wanted to do the record. So I got that was my first like major you know what year was multi platinum record that was in I think seventy nine oh, I great. think great. and then so that was my first like uh-huh. you know and I tell you man I as much as I love stage and I always did love stage I'm never never had a problem with being on stage but there is nothing <clears throat> for me like being in the studio. And having that feeling of what the studio was, and and being able to put my art down for you know for for a life you know for for eternity essentially. You're you know? one of the very few guys, if not the only person that I have played with before in a band, grew up playing, that has actually transitioned to the studio from the early days. Like when it was all analog, right? Yeah, and it sounded different. And mm-hmm. also, there was a different workflow mm-hmm. where the band actually showed up. You yes. either had a pre-production, you showed up prepared, yeah, and you did <laughs> two or three takes of each song. Yeah, and you had a certain budget, mm-hmm. bigger budget, mm-hmm. bigger studios. Yeah, uh, sometimes more distractions because you were in the uh, record plant, mm-hmm. which I think purposely they put those oh, yeah. distractions. That was so a time just, killer. Yeah, so exactly. Make more money. <laughs> make, make make more money. But at the, at the end of the day, you make a great record sure you know and yeah. then the transition to like right now we are in your studio in your house it's a great studio but it's it's a different technology different world yeah. different technology yeah. than what you had at the record plant sure how is it different with you making a record today than it was even even if, if it's just as a musician and not a producer but then again you start producing when it was still analog right well i You know, a lot of what happened was we saw, you know, sort of paradigm shifts as as we went along. There was that the first, you know, I because I remember I was one of the first guys in L.A. to um, start working on the 
the actual in the digital world, you know, because partly is because.